Hiya, so today let's talk hoverfly lagoons. If you saw my video the other day with Dave Golson, uh, you'll see that we mentioned hoverfly lagoons as being something that create an ideal habitat for ho hoverflies in your garden. Hoverflies are quite a misunderstood insect. Uh, they're actually mimics of bees and wasps. So a lot of what you see in your garden will be a hoverfly. They're not all bees and wasps. This one here, which is on the front of very good garden, you can see how thick it is. It shows you how many hoverflies there are in the country. There's actually about 283 species. But this one here is actually called a marmalade fly. It is a species of hoverfly. And I think what we'll do is we'll take a closer look at a hoverfly that I've caught earlier. So we've gone with plan B. I was going to show you a live hoverfly that I caught earlier, but filming that and keeping it still long enough proved completely impossible. So this is actually a different species of hoverfly that I've actually pulled out of the shed. Uh, I tend to collect dead things. Um, and this one is actually a drone fly. So as the name suggests, hoverflies are flies. Uh, they're not bees and they're not wasps. And an easy way to tell them is that they've only got two wings as opposed to the four wings that a bee or a wasp will have. This particular character is uh, one that you might see walking along glades in woodland. They, they fly around about sort of six to ten feet high. Uh, they hover in midair and occasionally they'll actually come down and check you out. And that makes them a really endearing little hoverfly. So before I start making the hoverfly lagoon, I'll just point out some of the things that you're going to need. Um, I will put a link to the Buzz Club's website where they'll talk to you more about the actual project because this is a, a citizen science project you can actually get involved with. So not only is this going to be great fun to do in your garden, uh, you can also be contributing to science. So you can see just from looking on the table, this is really easy. Um, you need a milk bottle, well obviously plastic nowadays I'm afraid, but it suits purpose. Uh, if you cut the top off, the top can then be recycled and you then need to put some holes around about a pen size, about an inch down uh, from the top of your cut off milk bottle. That's so that it allows a natural drainage so that it doesn't overflow and that everything just sort of flows out. Uh, you're also then going to use water, so obviously you know we've got a bit of water going on here. This is water out of my water butt. Preferably use that rather than tap water if you can. Uh, tap water is okay if you can't. And you also then need some dead grass cuttings and some dead leaves and a tray for the bottom of your lagoon which will become apparent when we actually make it up. So we've collected everything that we need and now it's time to actually build the lagoon. So we've cut the milk bottle so this bit can be recycled and what we've got now is a little pot where we're going to house the lagoon. So you'll see that it's actually sitting on a tray, that's important, it's not just sitting on a tray just because I know full well that I'm about to spill the water. It's sitting on a tray with holes in it and that's for drainage and that's important for what we're going to do towards the end of building the lagoon. So I'll come back to that. So first of all, place your milk bottle wherever you want really in the centre is fine. Then what you need to do is basically get some old grass cuttings and put the grass cuttings in the bottom of your milk bottle, push them down. So while I'm doing this it's worth you going and looking at the Buzz Club website at some stage because they'll show you how to maintain it um, but also they will show you how to do a count of the maggots and the pupa and we'll talk about maggots a little bit later on. So as much grass as you think you need it doesn't need to be right to the top because you're going to put some leaf litter on the top. So then if you get your water and pour that in, you might need to top the grass up afterwards because this is obviously going to make the grass go down. Now, a little word of warning, this will smell. Uh, the reason that your hoverflies are going to be attracted to this is for the same reasons they are in the wild to what's called rot holes in trees. In trees you'll get, occasionally you'll get somewhere where a branch is broken off or there's been damage to the tree that might fill with water. Within that you get a rotting cycle and that smell is what actually attracts the hoverflies. So you're creating the identical thing by doing this. So expect a few smells, 
uh, but the smells far outweighed by how exciting this is going to be when you see your hoverfly larvas. So we've got grass in, I might just put a bit more grass in this, I'm sure if Dave Gulson's watching this he's doing, oh, he's doing this all wrong, but hopefully not, so there you go, we've got loads of grass in there now, and you'll see that I've made sure obviously it's below the leakage marks, which are all of these little holes I've put in here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the leaf litter. Now this is really important because the hoverfly needs somewhere to land and the leaf litter will help do that. So there you go, that's looking relatively tidy for a hoverfly lagoon. So as important as the leaf litter on the top is sticks. You need to be able to put some sticks in, just slide them down the side. This is so that the larva can get a hold of something when they need to come out of the pot. Uh, it also allows the adults, if needs be, to to actually cling on while they're laying their eggs. So I'm just going to put three sticks in here. They don't they can go anywhere. They don't have to be in any particular order. So now we've got the sticks in. We've got the actual lagoon itself. Now the importance of this tray here is because the larva are going to pupate and for that they need to be out of the water, they need to be in the dry. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill this here with leaf litter as well. And I've got a few more leaves that I'll add to that later on. And basically what you've got there is the ideal habitat for hobflies to come along and lay their eggs. So there you have it, a complete hoverfly lagoon, uh, all ready and waiting for hover hoverflies to move in. Um, what we'll do is we'll talk next about why a hoverfly lagoon for a start and also how you can get involved in the hoverfly lagoon citizen science project. So there you go, we've now built a hoverfly lagoon, hopefully that will be populated by hoverflies within the next few days actually. Quite hopeful and it fits in really well with their life cycle. So the reason that we've actually built this, uh, as, as fun as it's been, uh, is that some hoverflies do need water in order for their larvae to grow up. So what will happen is that the adult hoverfly will come along, it'll lay its eggs in here, the eggs will hatch into the larvae. Now, for those of you that are studying metamorphosis at school, you'll know that the life cycle comes in two different types of uh, metamorphosis. You've got complete and you've got incomplete. Really, really easy. Your complete metamorphosis, which is what the hoverfly has got, involves a pupa. So it's eggs, larva, pupa, and then adult, just like a butterfly. Things like dragonflies have an incomplete metamorphosis. And that means that they just have the egg, and then they have what's called a nymph, which is the larval stage, but they don't go into a pupa. They, they, they go straight into the adult, they grow into the adult. And the actual uh, larval stage of the hoverfly is what you probably know as maggots. So it's time to introduce rat-tailed maggots. So these are rat-tailed maggots. And you can see here that the maggot body is at the beginning and then it's got what looks like a tail. And it's the tail that gives it its name. There's a lot more pictures of these on the Buzz Club site, which I'll talk to you about soon. The tail isn't a tail. The tail is actually a snorkel. So what the larva does is the larva is actually submerged under the water feeding, but it has this tail that it sticks above the water and that's how it breathes. So whilst it's in its larval stage, it's actually breathing through that tube. When it becomes a pupa, whilst the tail can still be there on some species, it has like what look like little horns on the head of the pupa and that's where it breathes. But in the pupal stage, that's when it needs to be out of the water. That's why we've got the sticks. So they'll climb up the sticks as lava, they'll go down into the leaf matter below, which is dry. That's where they'll become pupa. That's where we'll, they'll then hatch into adults. And if you actually join the Buzz Club's Citizen Science Project, they will talk you through how to count the lava, how to count the pupa, but then also how to store those pupa so that when the adult emerges, you get a really, really good view of some extremely good species. So just a little bit more about um, why hoverflies are important, why it's also important to get involved in this citizen science project with the Buzz Club. Uh, hoverflies are really, really important pollinators. We all know that pollinators are in serious trouble, they're in serious decline, 
together. So the more we can do to actually help pollinators in the garden, the better. When your adults hatch, and that should take anywhere up to about four weeks, um, you'll get a hoverfly that will be basically a nectar and pollen feeder. Uh, that's what hoverflies predominantly feed on. And by doing that, they are creating pollination, which is really, really important. So I think the best thing you can do is if you clearly have great fun building this, because it is great fun, and it's going to be amazing when you do see hoverflies using it. So clearly have fun doing that, but don't forget that, you know, there is this citizen science project that you can get involved with through the Buzz Club. They've got great fact sheets. Uh, Ellen, who actually came up with this particular project, actually does some really good videos as well. So if you want to see really good footage of some of these rat-tailed maggots, then she's got some cracking ones that she can show you on the website.